In today's Prime Focus, we're talking to the people who are most affected by today's ruling students. Bumio Misere is a student at Duke University, and Alex Shea will be attending Brown University in the fall. Thank you both for coming on the show. Bumi, I'd like to start with you. What's your reaction to today's ruling? I can't say that I'm surprised, given the current uh, Supreme Court that we have, but I do worry about what getting rid of affirmative action means for the diversity that we see on campuses, especially schools like Duke University and Brown. Um, people that look like me who are underrepresented minorities typically don't find themselves in these universities, and I'm afraid that that's going to be a trend we see continuing in the years to come. Alex, you have a different take. Uh, what are your thoughts? I think this ruling is a win for America. I think that America fundamentally, one of our core tenets, which is in our Constitution, in our 14th Amendment, is that we don't treat people differently based on what race they are. And that's essentially what this Supreme Court decision says, is that colleges cannot treat students differently based on the race. And I think that's the right call. I think that's fair, because I, I, I genuinely don't understand why um, a student's race should be a factor in the admissions process, because I think that there are so many better characteristics that we can use to judge students. Alex, I want to push back for a moment there, because you said we don't treat people differently based on their race. Do you think that that's the reality in America today? Do you think that people get all treated the same despite their race? Well, I think that obviously there are disadvantages that some people face. And I think I heard the president's speech earlier today, and he was talking about how still, even though this ruling happened, colleges can still consider a student's economic background, the school district that they went to. And I think absolutely those th are things that we should consider, because you're absolutely right that in the past there has been systemic racism, which has held minorities back. And so I think as a result of that, we should absolutely be considering a student's circumstances and how best they were able to capture lives on the opportunities that were accessible to them. And I think that absolutely is appropriate. Just one more question, and it's a yes or no here. Uh, you said in the past there's been systemic racism. Is that to imply that it does not exist today? Well, I think it depends. I think that affirmative action is, in a sense, systemic racism and that we're treating students differently based on race. Uh, Boomi, for students whose education was impacted by racial inequities, uh, they might now have to write about their experiences in their essays because they aren't allowed to reveal race on the application. How do you think that that will impact future college applicants? I would say that it's going to add another layer to the systemic racism that I believe is very, very alive and well in America and in college admissions, it's no different. When we think about underrepresented minorities, black and Latino students in particular, I think that by forcing these students, if they wish to have their race considered, to write about these racial challenges, traumas, and discrimination, is making their race the forefront of their identity, which is not fair to these students. And I would also say that the there are many, many different factors that what a student cannot control that are still being considered in college admissions. Let me just want you to react directly to, to what Alex had to say because he said he doesn't think that uh, we should treat people differently based on their race when it comes to, well, in general, but also in particular here when it comes to college admissions. Well, I would say that I think many people who have been the victims of systemic racism, like myself, would be very, very clear in stating that race and racism is still very, very alive today. And I think that by this ruling, we're going to see more people who look like me um, unable to get into these schools, not because they aren't good enough to get in, but because these campuses may not be able to maintain their diversity initiatives as well as they could have when affirmative action was still allowed. Even just the idea that it cannot be marked on your application, but it could be deeply and very descriptively written about in your essays makes no sense to me. If we're allowing students to talk about their race, then why can we not allow these students to check a box about their race when they're applying? Both of you applied and were accepted to universities that did consider race as a factor in their admissions. I'm curious about how that consideration makes you feel. Alex, we'll start with you. Right. Well, I think, obviously, I'm a little bit uncomfortable knowing that I got into Brown and that somehow or another my race was a factor. I, I think that Personally, I want them to judge me for Alex, my individual, my individuality, and I want to be able to portray myself authentically. And I, I wasn't able to do that. Bumi, your thoughts? I would say that I am glad that in a holistic admissions process, 
my identity and part of that is my blackness the first thing that people see when they see me was included in my application and you know the thing about affirmative action as we've known it as um alex and i actually went through is that by virtue of Supreme Court precedent, it was only to be considered amongst a host of other factors. And so I just feel sad for my underclassmen that are still in high school who won't get to be known by that all-encompassing part of their identity, which, whether we like it or not, in America, race is part of your identity. It's not something that you can separate yourself from. Bumi and Alex, really appreciate this academic discussion. No doubt it's going to be going on in classrooms and homes uh, for weeks and possibly years to come. And, and we appreciate both of your, your insights and, and both of your perspectives tonight. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.